Hello people of YouTube, my name is Steve Gray, thank you for watching. Today we're going to be talking about Season 6, Episode 8 of Rick and Morty, winding down here. Only two episodes left for the season. Two more weeks of Rick and Morty before we're probably not going to see Rick and Morty for a while. Uh, we start off with a fight between... Uh, Mr. Nimbus and Rick. Uh, Rick ends up destroying this giant kind of sea fortress, which is what Mr. Nimbus wanted in the first place. Uh, then we run into Cookie Magneto uh, for like half of a second before Rick kills him. And uh, Rick is getting kind of sick and tired of um, all of these 90 villains kind of showing up. Uh, then we end up with like this little uh, Mr. Kazoo looking dude <laughs> that calls Rick. Uh, an ugly drunk there he is right there, getting the life force sucked out of him. At which point Rick actually ends up going to, to therapy uh, to Dr. Wong and uh, trying to figure out why this keeps happening. Uh, Dr. Wong then says, let's make a bet. Um, why don't you just ignore these uh, 90s-esque villains that keep popping up all the time? Um, for a week, uh, see if they go away, um, and Jer he's like, all right, all right, I, 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 you're, I agree, um, you know, Morty and the family are kind of like, oh, wow, you know, it's, it's kind of healthy, you're finally doing this, actually going to therapy without turning yourself into a pickle, bringing back the Pickle Rick, uh, reference from, I think that was season three, I want to say, it's, it's, it's been a long time since we saw, uh, Pickle Rick. Uh, then we have this guy whose name is literally the Piss Master <laughs> or something along those lines. I thought it was pretty funny. Um, and uh, he's going after Rick as well. He's just literally coding the house. Uh, he talks about giving uh, Summer a golden shower. Uh, and that does it for Jerry. Jerry gets very angry at that. Um, plus, he's also, you know, covering... Uh, his flowers and urine, which his bees need, because we all know Jerry is the expert beekeeper, even though we haven't seen him do that in a long time. Uh, so he goes out, basically says stop, <laughs> um, and then they start getting in a fight. Uh, Jerry then picks up a flamingo, starts beating the crap out of him. Um, he ends up giving up and flying away. Uh, Summer films it, a couple other people are also filming it, uh, and Jerry kind of becomes this uh, like international hero. Um, and everybody's loving him, uh, at which point these aliens bestow upon him uh, this magical orb thing that, that grants him powers. Um, and it's sticky. Apparently the orbs get sticky uh, when they're with the person they're, <laughs> they're meant to be. Uh, but Rick could never have a sticky orb uh, because uh, Rick is not a hero in the traditional sense. Um which is really weird, you know, it's kind of like, why well, I, I don't understand if that's like a reference to something, this sticky orb, uh, who knows, but Jerry cannot figure it out, um, somewhere in the rest of the family are kind of like encouraging Rick, like, yeah, you know, like, let him do it, so, so, uh, Rick ends up making this super suit for Jerry, which the orb goes in, which gives him a massive powers, uh, he literally has the power to blow up an entire planet, uh, if he so chooses, he finds a planet filled with Hitlers. Uh, I think this is supposed to be the original Hitler, but he's still alive. And then we just have like a bunch of alien Hitlers all ready to perform genocide. Uh, he ends up blowing up the entire planet. And he was like, oh God, I hope I didn't just kill a bunch of innocent people. And he didn't. Uh, the planet was literally just filled with Hitlers. <laughs> so, so nobody really cared. Uh, it makes Jerry even more of a hero. Um... Then we get to see Rick kind of storming in because he's kind of annoyed with Jerry. Um, and, and Dr. Wong basically continuously saying, like, you need to let this go. Like, relax. You know, it's it's okay. Just just let it go. Uh, Jerry then gets this cool uh, giant spaceship Mitsubishi, uh, which I'm assuming is just uh, kind of like an advertisement plug in there for Mitsubishi. But, you know, they got they got to pay their bills, too. Uh, we then have more 90 villains. We have a giant, like, uh, beanstalk. I think he was, like, like a French or something with the mustache. I'm not really sure. Uh, and then he ends up getting in a fight with a belt buckle dude. Uh, Rick ends up getting drunk, like he always does. You know, what else is new? And he's getting really annoyed um, with uh, hearing about Jerry all the time. He then realizes that he actually relates more to the the, uh, the Piss Master. Um, so he <laughs> grabs a six pack and goes basically to have a conversation with him, you know, because he's kind of in the same boat uh, he is. 
where you know he's he's just kind of out of it doing his own thing uh everybody hates him to a certain extent uh and then he finds out that he ended up killing himself so he tries to heal him up uh wake him back up but he realizes that it's kind of been too late uh his daughter then uh Pip -Piss master's daughter actually ends up running to the door um basically saying you know i, I wouldn't be able to live with myself um if he did something so rick puts on his gear uh, basically says, you know, no matter what I do, it's not going to be your fault. Um, and then he decides to become, a, he, to basically take over that persona and become a hero, um, for, for his, basically this guy's daughter. So he, he goes out, you know, starts doing a bunch of good deeds, uh, and then he's going to make it look like he sacrificed himself. Um, he's, he basically, he plants a fake bomb. Oh, there you go. Piss, piss me on my rush. <laughs> um. And he's making him like a famous hero, uh, essentially. Um, Dr. Wong actually thinks what he's doing is, is kind of a good idea, you know, make it, to a certain extent. But she doesn't know the full story, you know, that basically uh, the guy ended up killing himself strictly because of Jerry. Because he just couldn't do it anymore. Uh, he realized that the entire world hates him, so he doesn't want to stick around. Uh, this council of people that give magic orbs to people, which I think this this might be a Marvel reference possibly might be a marvel reference uh they're like yeah let's go give him an orb too looks like he turned around um and they task jerry with giving him the orb uh, because jerry's kind of like petty about it he was like what no that guy was a major the major dick and, and then he, he was like yeah but uh people can change like that's that's the whole part of it part of this people can change so Rick puts a bomb on an orphan site, and uh, all of these, basically the entire planet is orphan children. And um, one of these kids in the bomb suits tries to defuse it, and he was like, I just realized, I have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, and I was like, yeah, that's that's the, the reaction you would expect uh, from an eight-year-old. So uh, they drag the bomb out, says, you know, he sacrificed himself. Everybody thinks he's dead. Um, the plan worked out really well. Uh, they end up taking the, the orb from Jerry. Uh, because, you know, Jerry kind of turned into a little bit of a, a, a jealous, very jealous, <laughs> I guess you could say, because the attention is coming off of him. Uh, so Jerry loses all of his abilities. Um, Rick doesn't really say anything about it, uh, about the suicide note, anything like that, but he does end up telling Morty. They take away the Mitsubishi uh, giant spaceship as well. Uh, his whole family's proud of him. He tells Morty <laughs> that in confidence. He was like, yeah, but don't tell your dad. And then he goes and tells his dad, and then Jerry's like, oh my god, what did I do? What did I do? Oh my god, this is terrible. Why did you do this? Uh, and that's kind of where the episode ends. Uh, the preview here um, is this council, like, yeah, let's give one to Scarlett Johansson. Uh, and they were like, no, no. And then there was this other guy. Um, uh, then they were going to give one to Mr. Nimbus. I guess Mr. Nimbus does pretty good for the world. Who knows, but uh, I guess his secretary, the, the, the starfish lady, if I remember whatever her name was, uh, said he was busy. Um, and that's kind of where it ends. But uh, interesting episode overall. You know, uh, Rick actually goes to therapy. Um, I think he, he somewhat deals with it in a healthy way. And I think that's kind of what this episode is about, is Rick just kind of uh, dealing with it in a somewhat healthy way. Um, you know, he's actually uh, trying to become a better person to a certain extent. Uh, which, yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's good. Get some character development going on in there. There's your thumbnail, I think, for the, for the video right there. But I uh, definitely like this episode a lot better. So, I mean, I feel like Rick is realizing that he is in a lot of these situations because he so chooses to be. And that if he just kind of ignored... Um, all of these things that are going against him that he wouldn't get himself into these bad situations as, as much. I mean, he still probably will eventually, you know, occasionally get into a, a sticky situation, uh, sticky or pun intended, um, but he won't always do it. And I think that's kind of where we're trying to get, like, the reason he's in all of these crazy situations. Uh, he drags Morty along, obviously, all the time, but, uh, you know, he's, he's, I think he's finally accepting the fact that, like, 90, I'm, I'm gonna say, like, a good 90% of it is his own doing, um, the reason he is in those situations, uh, and that if he just kind of let it go, he, he wouldn't end up there, like he has been, uh, over and over and, and over again, um, 
not, I wouldn't call this like a classic episode per se. Definitely, you know, worth a rewatch. Probably some things I missed in the process, but um, compared to the last episode, this one's going to get an 8 out of 10. Uh, definitely enjoyed it a lot better. Um, wasn't kind of massively confused with a bunch of character references that I didn't understand. Um, and, I mean, some of them, you're, you're not going to get every single reference. Uh, I think that that's a given with pretty much any of these episodes, especially if it's, like, the older stuff. Like, as I said, that kid, that one floating alien character, I think, was supposed to represent um, that one alien dude that, sh that pops up in the Flintstones. Um, if, you're, if you're a younger person, you know, talking, like, I, I would say, like, in your late teens, early 20s, you're probably not going to get that reference, because you've probably never seen a single episode with Fred. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where we're going to end it. Hit that subscribe button on the way out. Leave a comment. Put your thoughts down below. Hit the like button. Um, all that fun stuff. And I will be doing a bleach clip slash short video later today. Have a good one.